When I attended a funeral in Germany for the very first time, I was very relieved that I had Yvonne with me. The reason is because funerals in Germany are a little bit different than they are in Guatemala City, my hometown. In this video, we're going to talk about nine things you should be aware of if you're ever going to attend a funeral in Germany. Thing number one is how do you actually say funeral in German? Well, usually before you go to one, you get invited and you should know the word for it, right? And the German, there are actually several German words. The most commonly used are one, Beerdigung, which typically is the word for actually putting someone in the ground per se. And then there is Beisetzung, which is a more general term for the whole ceremony of a funeral. Number two is the time frame. For example, in Guatemala City, when someone passes away, literally the burial happens within the next maximum 72 hours. Versus in Germany, that works very differently, right? Yeah, it uh, depends by state because the general funeral law is a state law and not like a whole Germany law. But 72 hours is kind of like the fastest possible way and usually depending on um, burial or cremation that can be weeks or even months uh, in between death and funeral. Thing number three is the location of a funeral in Germany. Now what's super interesting here is that in Germany it is not allowed for you, if, for example if someone is cremated, for you to take the urn with the ashes home. Absolutely not. No, there is a law and that is Germany-wide um, that says that any burial needs to take place in a cemetery or cemetery setting. Hmm. Um, so the, it's, it's, it's a real law and you cannot like unavoided, bend it. like bend it, it's not possible. <laughs> uh, any funeral, any death needs to also go through a funeral home and they will arrange whatever you or the deceased um, wants or liked. So in case of a burial in a casket, that really must happen in a cemetery. And in case of a cremation, like you mentioned, with an urn, there is a, it's a little bit more flexible. Um, what has become a lot more popular in the past years is to be closer to nature. And um, there are specific forests that, are called, that can be called, for example, Friedwald. Um, so like peaceful forests that are meant to be for burials. Um, so it's not like the typical cemetery, but more like a yeah, enclosed forest area for the deceased. Also additional to that, there are um, ceremonies that are done on, in the ocean. Like there's designated areas of ocean, especially in the North and Baltic Sea, where the urn can be dropped in these designated areas. And the ceremony happens on a boat, which is actually a close friend of ours buried their dad that way, right? Number four is what do you wear to a German funeral? And here it's still very traditional and you should wear something conservative and dark. So black, gray, dark blue maybe, but um, generally black is the color, yeah. Yes, and that means black is everything. Usually you don't wear anything at all that is colored, not even a shirt, the pants, the belt, everything needs to be in a monotone kind of like very, this is a sign of respect to the family and friends when you wear stuff that is dark. Number five is what should you bring to a German funeral? Or should you bring something? That is also a question. good question, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and typically the answer I would say is no, you shouldn't bring anything. I mean, it depends a little bit on the relationship you had with the deceased or with the family of the deceased, but there is no expectation for you to bring presents or massive flower bouquets. You can opt to bring one white rose, for example, if you decide to um, drop that in the, in the grave later on, but that is the maximum. On the contrary, what is usually or what is quite common in Germany is that instead of gifts or of flower arrangements, that the um, family of the deceased ask for donations. Um, very often, let's say if someone died from cancer and received palliative care in a special unit, that you donate to that unit because they made the person go um, yeah, pain-free, for example. That is uh, quite common um, and that would usually happen um, yeah, by announcing the wish for donations with a bank account uh, and like a keyword so you know the donation can be attributed to that person um, but that will be communicated so you know of it. Yes and most importantly you're not expected to bring an envelope with money to the funeral. Usually not. This usually happens before the ceremony they'll let you know the bank account where you can do the transfer and that's how the donation happens. Number six is don't expect a casket. During the research for this video I mean we already had a feel for it but the research confirms that 77 percent of Germans that died in 2021 were cremated. That's a very high number it's and the numbers are just rising right? Yeah it's a very high number and uh, also the stati statistics go like this, potentially increasing over the years even more. There's two very simple reasons for it. One, like I mentioned before, like this desire to be closer to nature and kind of like break free from this very um, close cemetery setting. Mm -hmm. And two, also it's um, most likely an impact that uh, cremation tends to be 
uh, less um, budget intense than a regular funeral um, involving a casket and, and, and an actual real grave that needs to be taken care of. Uh, if you're interested in costs, um, we have a guide written about the topic as well on our website, which we link in the description below. And there we talk a little bit more about that as well. Yes. So if there is a casket, for example, which is the low percentage as we discussed, that usually is a closed casket versus in Guatemala, for example, is very common to have open casket funerals. And additional to that, what you would see for the ceremony, you would see the urn, a picture of the disease next to it and some flower arrangements next to that. And that's would be like the altar or the thing that is created as commemorance to the deceased person. Number seven, it's the ceremonies. Now, usually there are two ceremonies, I think, Generally speaking, in the Western world, this is the case, right? You have the funeral, which is the ceremony to give the eulogy and um, remember the, the deceased person through a speech or something. And this is super interesting because in Germany, I mean, it depends if the family is not religious, then they have a designated funeral speaker or eulogy speaker, one could say. And this speaker, his, their profession is to be a speaker, and it's not necessarily related to church or clergy, it's really just person, a person that you hire, and they prepare a speech based also on the input that you give, of I course, would presume. Yes, yeah. And interesting fact here, we went to a, this funeral that we talked about in the introduction, and the guy that was giving the speech there, the, or the eulogy, was the same guy that gave the speech for your sister's wedding, well, right? Well, not just the speech, the whole ceremony, yeah. Wow, so, so that's... So he's a professional, like you said, speech giver for, let's say, um, impactful um, moments in your life. Hmm. And uh, the crazy thing is he, he's an amazing speaker and um, he really caught the ambience and the, the notion of the life of, as well as in the wedding, as well as in the funeral, hmm. um, perfectly. So um, kudos and really it's important to find that person that can do that because rarely it's family members in Germany that uh, give the eulogy. Yes, if the family is religious, then most possibly could be the minister, rabbi, or a clergy member as well. So what's the word of this speaker in Germany? It would be, for a funeral, it would be a Trauerredner. As also part of the ceremony situation, there's usually a song that is played. For me, that was actually quite, kind of like an awkward situation because this, the eulogy is given, then the person sits down and we're all sitting, and then they put on a song, which I would assume was the, the deceased person's one of favorite songs or to commemorate the life of this person. And uh, we all just sit there and listen to the song. Mind you, the song was also like a three minute song, you know? Yeah, it's when the tears start falling. Yeah. And what's also super interesting is that everyone I noticed uh, mourns alone, uh, conservative, quietly. quietly. Yeah. Versus in Guatemala, for example, it's really a very loud environment, I would say, and you would actually start hugging each other and it, it's the moment to embrace, I would say, if such a thing would happen versus here, everyone really took that moment to think of, of, of the person, you know? Think of the person, yeah. the, the beautiful moments, the, the life that then one had with, with that person. Yeah. yeah, I would say, I think if I remember correctly with your parents, because it was a family friend that passed away, we held hands maybe, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, but that's like as much as you would go, you know, to, to the rest is really just done alone for yourself. Right. So after the ceremony that Jen just described is more or less done, um, usually either the eulogy speaker or the um, funeral home uh, responsibles who arranged the whole setting will guide the family and you to the burial site. Uh, in this case that we attended, like I said, it was in a Friedwald, so there was already a designated tree, let's put it that way, that was selected um, and you walk as a group slowly to that area um, and then the whole is either already dug or is going to be dug. That depends a little bit on the individual setting, I would say. And in this case, the urn was being let in the ground. And that is the time when everyone can, after there's usually a signal, I mean, just follow the rest of the people, hmm. um, when people individually start going close to the to the grave and yeah, say their last words silently. It's, it's nothing loud, really like, more yeah. like in your mind. Um, maybe also a few mumbles uh, just to yourself or to the, to the deceased. And like I said, you can either drop a rose. Sometimes also next to it is a little stand with some sand and a shovel. So you can take hmm. a shovel of sand and let it down. Um, it really depends on the setting and you can easily read the situation or just copy the others. Yes, completely. If you're going to bring a rose, important again to highlight, it should be a white rose. Never should you bring a red rose because that just represents something different in Germany, which is love and passion and nothing really appropriate for a burial. 
or, or interment, as we learned the word recently. If the content of this video is helpful to you and your life in Germany, then please also give it a like. And if you're looking for more content to settle into life in Germany more smoothly, smoothly, then be sure to also hit the subscribe button. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can always support this channel by buying us a virtual coffee at simplegermany.com slash coffee. Thank you for your support. Now, number eight to the big question, how do you express your condolences to the family members and friends? And this is very important that um, more or less Everything that we just described, you are quiet. All you say is maybe a hello when you arrive and you recognize someone that you know, but that's it. There's not much conversation happening. Mm -hmm. The condolences you express either after the burial, so after the letting in the ground and everyone has kind of like said their goodbyes, um, if the family members stay close by. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they walk away because they don't want to receive condolences. Again, reading the situation and seeing what others are doing. And then you can walk up to the family or whoever you're close to that is also um, in grief, uh, let's say, you can go, go ahead and just express your condolences very authentically and briefly. It is really just one sentence and that could be mein herzliches Beileid, which is the standard sentence which expresses your deepest sympathies. Depending on the relationship with that person, you can join that with a firm handshake or with a hug, but that really needs to be a close relationship. Yes, I would say, again, for me, the interesting thing is that it's a very respectful, respectful and distant, I would say, um, event. Did you know we have templates on our website that can help you settle into life in Germany more, more smoothly? smoothly? You can check them out at simplegermany.com slash templates. Now, continuing with the video. Now, the second best uh, moment to give your condolences in case it's you don't feel comfortable um, right after the burial or there's too many people or like I said, the relatives walk away, would be at the following funeral meal, which is actually number nine. Yes, which is the funeral meal, which is called? Um, there's several names for it. Uh, it could be called Leichenschmaus, which I personally feel weird saying. <laughs> um, it could also just be um, the, the Kaffee und Kuchen after the burial or the Beerdigungskaffee. Um, anything that expresses that there's, there's, like I said, there's like 10 different words for it. Yes. And this is actually another interesting aspect because after the ceremony and the burial, then everyone takes their cars or public transportation and they go to what I would say it's a humble coffee place um, because it's not meant to be a pompatious meal or anything super fancy. Like you said, sometimes it's just coffee and cake, very simple meal or very simple food like bread rolls with maybe cheese and coffee tea. Um, like I said, it's not like a real meal. And that is the moment actually where people actually start talking to each other yeah. and they start telling stories about the deceased and they actually are more open to interaction and hugging. And, and Also because you left the setting of the burial site, um, so which is all about respect, like we mm. said, and in this different location um, where it's yeah, food and drinks are involved, it's where yeah the conversation becomes more fluid and you let go a little bit mm. and it's okay to be loud again. Also, I think it's this um, transition from being quiet and respectful to uh, it's okay to speak uh, in a different location. Yes, and I think also alcohol could be consumed. In yeah, this. I think when we went, there was um, Kölsch involved also. Yes, there yeah. was some beer as well involved. And but I would depends. say, yeah, and you also need to play it by ear. If I remember correctly, we stayed maybe an hour and a half too. It's also not an event that progresses into the early hours of the morning. Um, you really need to feel the situation. And if you're there an hour, two hours, that's also enough to, to, to show your condolences. And there, even if the family walked away during the burial, they will be there. And that is, like you mentioned, a perfect occasion to also share your condolences and, and, and reach them in that case. If you ever need to arrange a funeral in Germany, of course, there are a few bureaucratic steps that you need to take. We have described them all in a written guide that you can find in the video description below. Until next time, choose. When I first attended my German fu- my German- <laughs> <laughs> when I attended my... a funeral in Germany for the first time, how about that? Also not a German funeral. <laughs> my German funeral. No, please not. <laughs> when I attended a German funeral. Okay, okay. <laughs> Stop smiling so big, man. <laughs>